Hi, and welcome to Politics Tech Lightning, where I ignite your passion for all things Azure. If you're a job seeker striving to become an Azure architect or just want to test your skills, then you're in the right place. In this video, I'll take you through my tried and true interview process for Azure Architect candidate. So get ready to flex your brain muscles with a series of thought-provoking questions that will put your knowledge to the test. Let's buckle up and dive in right into the world of Azure architecture now. There we go. Azure and the public cloud are like an endless universe of possibilities. With so many topics to cover, it's easy to feel lost in space. Even the most skilled architects can't possibly master every single topic and service Azure has to offer. So my main strategy so far as an interviewer is twofold. First, there's the basic Azure knowledge that you just have to know. I'm referring to the components of a landing zone such as virtual networks, network security groups, routing, firewall, and others. Secondly, I will identify the area in which you are most comfortable. This can be any of those, such as high-level architecture, infrastructure as code, security, application migration, or any other topic related to Azure. Now that's where I will start to drill to see how far your experience goes. So let's start with the interview. Then. These questions or answers are taken from real live conversation and interview. Remember, some of these questions are actually there to assess the area which the candidate is more comfortable with. Not all of them have an immediate right or wrong answer, but are open-ended to allow for additional follow-up questions. Question number one. Can you tell me the process you go through to move a business to action? The first step is always to assess and gather business requirements. It involves taking and listening to a client to understand your business drivers. Talk to them. These business drivers are a combination of financial and technical ones. Also, let's not forget that the IT landscape for them will look very different with a cloud presence than what they're used to today. Organizations need to be ready for the move. Once these aspects are clear, the actual technical work of architecting and migrating toward the cloud can begin. Are you aware of any frameworks that can assist the client and yourself to move to Azure? Well, we have the Cloud Adoption Framework, CEF from Microsoft. There are several phases in this framework which help guide the business from planning to implementation. It shows, for example, anti-patterns that you need to avoid. It talks about business outcomes, organization alignment, all the way up to the minimal viable product, MVP. Part of the CEF is the Enterprise Scale Landing Zone, which provide guidance in the design and the technical setup. It suggests how to design the subscriptions and where to place certain workload. In addition, we also have the Well-Architected Framework, WAF, which is there to target specific workload and ensure it's according to Microsoft best practice. What, according to you, is the best feature of Azure? Oh, it's difficult to pick one best feature. However, there's always one thing that comes to mind with Azure, and that's the integration between Windows Active Directory domain services and Azure AD. With native identity sync tools between these, it really helps to set the foundation for authentication and authorization to the cloud. You have to design a landing zone. How would you deploy the infrastructure? The go-to deployment method is using infrastructure as code, IAC, so I would definitely deploy the environment using my skills in Terraform uh, and infrastructure as code. What are some of the benefits and drawbacks of using infrastructure as code? The obvious benefit is that you're able to deploy an entire landing zone very quickly. You can easily adapt parameters and redeploy the same infrastructure somewhere else. For dev test, you can deploy and remove entire environment at the push of a button. So in that sense, it's incredible flexible. A downside is that it requires a completely different type of skill set from the engineer. If you're not an expert in the coding language, you may take a longer time modifying settings than using the portal. Also, you have to be aware of configuration drift. If you have your, all your infrastructure as code, you cannot have someone go in and change the setting in the Azure portal. What other languages besides Terraform are popular in Azure? 
We have the ARM templates. They have a very long history and they're widely used. They are being superseded with Bicep, which is completely native to Azure. Why did you pick up Terraform instead of Bicep? Well, if both are powerful languages, uh, our internal teams are managing other cloud platforms such as AWS with Terraform, though it seemed like a natural choice. Terraform, it's actually cloud agnostic and can be used for any clouds, while Bicep, on the other hand, is specific only to Azure. Do you see any downsides with Terraform? The state file, for example, while it's useful, it sometimes breaks and requires manual action to fix. Also, unlike Bicep, Terraform takes a little bit of time to integrate new services that are released in Azure. Bicep have them always immediately on day one. As you've seen, this is how the conversation should go. I picked up that the candidate was using Terraform, and I started to move into the subject to see what he knows. We're now going to switch some topics around. When we talk about encryption, we usually consider three types of encryption. You have encryption when data is being transferred. We call that data in transit or data in motion. Then we have encryption when data is located stored in a place, for example, in a storage account. We call this data at rest. There's a third type. Do you know which one? Hmm, that must be encryption of data in use. The Azure Public Cloud are focusing heavily on ensuring that data in use is being encrypted. Well, great. Well, what do you know about Azure and data in use encryption? Well, there are two main technologies in Azure that facilitate this all under the umbrella of Azure Confidential Computing. You have the AMD technology, which is special virtual machines, which you can safeguard. Then there's also Intel SDX technology, which provides a little bit more higher level of security, but it's not a complete virtual machine. You need to adapt your code and use the SDK from Microsoft to ensure your application can handle this. In addition, uh, there are Azure Kubernetes services and Clave support in Azure for the Intel SDS instructions. How would you perform load balancing in it? Can you narrow it down a bit? Is it a web application? Are there VMs I need to load balance? What exactly am I trying to load balance? Let's stick to virtual machines first. How can you load balance virtual machines in Azure? There's Azure Load Balancer, which works on layer 4 and distribute connection. You can put your virtual machines behind an Azure Load Balancer and that way distribute the load. So, let me get this right. You're able to configure two virtual machines behind a load balancer. You have one virtual machine as active and the other virtual machine as passive, correct? No, no. Azure Load Balancer only supports active-active configuration. For active passive configuration, there are other options such as Azure Traffic Manager and Azure Frontal. Which two technologies do you use to connect on premise to Azure and vice versa? It's either VPN or ExpressRoute. Usually, most enterprises use an ExpressRoute for their connection to Azure. What are the differences between a VPN and ExpressRoute? Well, VPN is what we all know as a traditional way to connect. Traffic goes over the internet, which we do not have any control over. There's no SLA on the connectivity as traffic latency are completely up to the internet service provider. ExpressRoute, on the other hand, is a private connection to Azure for which you do have an SLA and guaranteed bandwidth. Can you tell me about some of the compute options available to us in Azure? We have virtual machines, which is a core infrastructure as a service. There are many other options if you want to go serverless, such as Azure Functions, Azure App Service, and Azure Kubernetes Services, just to name a few. Can you name some uh, platform as a service, PaaS services in Azure? One of the most common ones are related to databases. There is, for example, SQL, Azure SQL Database, PostgreSQL, along with other types of databases available in Azure. Mm, you mentioned Azure PostgreSQL. Do you have any use case scenario for this? Well, PostgreSQL is one of the major considerations if you're running Oracle on-premise. If you're able to migrate the Oracle over to PostgreSQL in the cloud, there can be a substantial financial savings. But on the other hand, the initial migration may be more expensive. So every scenario has to be analyzed before a conclusion can be taken. And that's a wrap, folks. Did you enjoy the interview challenge? If you were in the hot seat with me, I bet I'd uncover your hidden talents and skills. The real question is, would you be a perfect fit for the job? Well, I wish you all the best on your journey of becoming an Azure architect. 
and may your career soar to new heights. Until next adventure together, stay sharp, focused, and take care. See you soon.